What's going on YouTube? For those that are new to the channel, I'm Uncommon Sense. I encourage you to have a look around and if you find that this is the place for you to be, I suggest that you do all three. Like, comment, subscribe. For those of you who are already familiar, welcome back Uncommon Sense fam. Today's video, 20 most romantical fragrances inspired by our lovely lady Lulu over at Aging Gorgeously. She had a live stream roughly about a week ago. About a week ago. I caught her live stream and this was one of her topics that she was covering on her channel. She and I had a chance to chat and I told her, I love this idea. Would you mind if I put it on my channel? She encouraged me to go ahead and here we are today. Shout out to Lulu. If you guys have not seen her content and not visited her channel, I'm going to be sure that I leave her channel information in the description below. You know what we're about to do. You know what time it is. We're about to get into this thing. Every single day. video you will find some cheapies, designers, niche, some that are for men, some that are for women, some that are unisex. My hope is that you come away from this video with a little bit more knowledge than you had before and a greater appreciation for fragrances. First up, Colonia Mira. This is a niche fragrance that I got in my Scentbox subscription a while ago. I've been holding off on buying a full bottle off my skin and in my nose. What I smell first, it draws some comparison to a fragrance that I already have in my collection, and that's Bulgari Man in Black Essence, but this one is very rich. It has a darkness that I really, really dig. Colonia Mira is targeted for men. Not 100% sure if or when ladies would pull that one off, but again, I say, if you like it, rock with it. As the name suggests, Mira, Mur is the star of the show. The seductive, warm, sweet, amber, makes an appearance as a co-star. It's romantic in the fact that it sits a little close on my skin, but there's a dark, dense richness to it that I really feel evokes the emotion of romance. It reminds me of a big hug wrapped up in amber and myrrh. My next one is Bond Number no. 9 Manhattan. It's a unisex fragrance. It's a spritz. Why it's not spraying? This one is sweet. I remember the last time I wore this, I was doing a training for all of my direct reports, my new processing system. And let me tell you guys, collectively, all the ladies on my team <laughs> pulled me to the side and told me, whatever you have on smells really good. I see this one definitely being a hit with the ladies. One of the ladies actually told me I would wear really that. Fragrance. So what I'm smelling this one is like honey and really ripe fruit. It's not sickening, but it's honeyed ripe fruit. I feel like it's romantic and sensual. That gets the juices flowing. No pun intended. It has two interesting notes. So the immortal note lends to the scent of hay, tobacco, and honey. Hence the honey that I smell. Genet, which lends to the ripened fruit. So this one makes a standout in my collection. I don't have it yet, but I'm gonna have to get me a full bottle of this one because I definitely believe it needs to stay around. I don't have any full bottles of Bond in my collection, so I'm gonna have to step my game up and land me one of those. Next up, Bulgari Blue. Bulgari Blue opens with that clean, lemony blast that I love in the fragrance, brought to us by Alberto Morias. I first experienced this fragrance in my late teens, early 20s. And the first time I smelled it, I was in love with it. It has a lemon-like scent, but lemon isn't listed anywhere in the notes. This one sits closer to the skin. It doesn't project extremely far, but I could definitely see myself wearing this out on a date and anywhere that I will be in close encounters because the fact that this smells like clean luxury soap. What other way to get the romance started than to know you're clean and fresh. Now the opening does have an outdoorsy bug spray slash off type of vibe, but the dry down is amazing. Fresh, clean, soapy, and refined. It's great for close encounters. Our next fragrance, K 
King of Love, distributed by Sea Fragrance. This one is intended for men. It touts all natural ingredients. If you didn't know any better, I guess you could assume that this bottle could be or would be for probably the ladies. Categorized as a fruity floral, the opening lists ruby mandarin and grapefruit. The first 15 or so minutes of it is challenging. It kind of smells like a plug-in that's been in the wall for too long. Remember when the plug-ins used to be, used to have the little tray and the gel inside and then if it's been in there for too long. The opening kind of reminds me of that. There are some florals up front. The opening is followed up with a mid of cool mint and some spices. And all of that's anchored in a woody, leathery base. Overall, the fragrance does have a Yves Saint Laurent La home type of vibe. This fragrance is extremely romantic. It is a close encounter type of fragrance. It has a good amount of longevity as well. It's not super in your face. The way that it projects is very soft and it kind of comes out in waves. I think it's perfect for a romantic date or a encounter when you're one on one with an individual. It lasts about eight hours on my skin and it touts all natural ingredients. What's more romantic than being organic? Next up, Carolina Herrera CH Men Privé. CH Men Privé is a staple for any gentleman. To me, this one is the epitome of perfect for a cooler date night fragrance. What I tend to categorize as romantic is very adjacent to sexy, and perhaps those two can be used interchangeably. So it was extremely challenging for me to distinguish in between which fragrances were explicitly romantic and which ones were explicitly sexy. Don't question my values. Judge your damn self. Romance and sexy, they kind of often precede each other. Sometimes it's vice versa. This one smells leathery, boozy from the whiskey, of course. Off my skin, it remains sweet while maintaining that leathery, boozy type of vibe, bringing it back into being very alluring. So meanwhile, you got that whiskey, you got that leather. There's still an allure from the fragrance that invites you in a little bit closer. I really enjoy this one. This is one that I definitely will be getting a full bottle of. I just have not seen it at the price I want to pay just yet. I'm also getting to that part of my fragrance journey where having huge bottles is not conducive to my space. And also too, my collection has grown so much, there's absolutely no way that I'll end up getting through all these fragrances. So it may not behoove me to get huge, huge bottles. The only time that I get the biggest bottles is when that's all they have available. From this one is class in the glass, my friends. and. I've been savoring this sample. I'll probably have maybe two or three more wears out of this one and then I'll have to get the full bottle. But I've been carefully, carefully going through my collection and spreading it out so that way I get enough chance to savor the moment. Also, on my list from the house of Carolina Herrera, chic. That damn cap. That's my only complaint about this one. I hate the cap on this one. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Piss me off. <laughs> it just will not stay put. This one's been featured on several of my lists. If you guys have been watching consistently, you'll see Chic show up on several lists. If you haven't been, no worries. So I got playlists, and that's, that's why, why the content's it. available consistently for your consumption. So in my experience and in my opinion, Chic for men has just really been an all-arounder. The watermelon note in this one is second to none. I, I really enjoyed this fragrance. This is like one of my favorites. It just makes magic on my skin. It draws a close comparison in my notes to Creed's Millicene Imperial and the others. The others being Ed Hardy's Love and Luck, Sean John's Unforgivable, but I feel like this one is just a little bit more complex and classy on my skin. In addition to that, it's a solid performer oh and it just God. happens to smell amazing. I just, I cannot, I really cannot take anything away from this fragrance other than that damn cap. I hate that cap. One thing I want to ask you guys, do you guys have any suggestions for a romantic fragrance? Do you guys have any suggestions for any of the romantic fragrances in your collection that I need to smell and add to my collection? If you answer yes to any of those, be sure to drop those suggestions below in the comments. I'd love to get my hands on a few more romantic fragrances. Next up, we have English Laundry Signature. Signature for me has a very soft projection. It is extremely classy. This one was a cheapie for me. 
It has a long lasting fragrance cloud that kind of hovers close and it's extremely enveloping. And this fragrance, lavender is the attention getter and sandalwood seals the deal. It kind of reminds me of Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mans, but it's a little less in your face. This one's a bit more refined and toned down. It's better suited for romantic encounters, just like a gentleman, refinery and class. Speaking of gentlemen, Gentlemen by Givenchy. This is the 2017 release. I recently reviewed this one. It also snagged a few spots on some of my more recent top 10 videos. I usually don't rock with many of the iris based scents. This one is an exception though. In addition to that, I actually paid full retail price for this one from Ulta. I feel like it's really well blended and it, this is perfect for something close and counting for you to actually roll up on and get real close to. I love this fragrance. Next up, Aqua Di Gio Profumo by Giorgio Armani. I usually don't feature this fragrance much on my channel at all. There's an insane amount of hype surrounding this one and everybody covers it. So I didn't feel like I was doing any service by coming back along and covering it with a review. However, I'd be lying to myself and you guys if I didn't include this one as a romantic fragrance. Pairing that classic Aqua Di Gio vibe with the added note of incense was a genius move. That's just a winning combination. This one is so low key and grown man. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I feel like dressing this up for a date or a romantic encounter is a no brainer. Coming up next is a fragrance that I've wanted to feature on my channel for a while. However, um, I've been hesitant to do so. I think I was participating in the thing that I suggest everybody stay away from and that's creative avoidance. That fragrance is Juliet Has a Gun anyway. Now, Juliet Has a Gun is a niche house and I don't hear a whole lot of talk about this, especially from the fellas of the unisex side. Put this on skin. It's clean, it's fresh, it's classified as a fruity floral. This one sits extremely close on my skin, but it's the epitome of what I would think a summer breeze would smell like. That opening will clear your sinuses. That lime, that neroli, in the base, it, there's that heady on, I believe draws a scent characteristic of jasmine mixed with some citrus, along with the musk. I really haven't found anything that smells like this fragrance, which is a great thing for me because you know, I'm all, I'm all about hunting down uncommon scents. I liked it anyway so much that I went ahead and got me a full bottle. We'll be doing a full review video and slash unboxing of this one to give this one the shine that it truly deserves. According to Fragrantica, this fragrance draws comparison to L'Occitane en Provence, Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria Flora Neroleum. Say that five times fast. From the same house of Julia Has a Gun, we have, mmm. This fragrance smells exactly like you would think. Most of them may lean, depending on who you ask, to the feminine side. However, mmm is a legitimate gourmand. Mm. It has a deliciousness about it that I really rock with. Julia Has a Gun is one of my favorite niche entries because the fragrances are extremely different and well blended. I don't see a lot of mention of it in Fragcom, which again, makes me happy because I'm on common sense. What I want to try to do is bring out the stuff that a lot of people aren't talking about. On my skin and the top, I smell a little bit of that raspberry. In the base, there's some caramel and vanilla, something extremely edible about it. It makes me want to bite it. Like I want to literally bite this paper. The base notes of interest are heliotrope. I think it's the heliotrope that makes it lean more to that floral perfumery side. To be honest with you guys, it actually reminds me of a sample that I got from my great friend, Dr. Rose, Dior's Feve Delicious. The only difference is between Julia Has a Gun mm, and Feve Delicious by Dior is that coffee note. Minus that coffee accord, those two are extremely similar. Next up, from the house of Mancera, Oud Black Candy. Recently just released a video talking about Oud Black Candy with first impressions. But I really feel like this one is so romantic. This is one of my more recent full bottle niche pickups 
that has that sugary vibe mixed with that licorice. There's a slight shot of mint up top in the opening that mixes in with that licorice that can be, it can be a lot to process in the beginning. This fragrance, this fragrance lasts so long. I really enjoy the composition of Mancera's. With it being very sweet and strong in the beginning, the real magic of this fragrance starts to happen in the dry down. The musk mixed with that sweetness in the dry down is like, it's an extremely unique fragrance too. I don't have anything in my collection that smells like this. Mm. Next up, and another one from Mancera. I didn't expect to like this one at all, based off the name alone. But my lovely friend, Dr. Rose Chaperon, put me on to Mancera's Rose Oud and Musk. I love the atomizer on these travel sprays that Dr. Rose sent us. They are amazing. In that opening, it's something kind of rubbery slash plasticky up front. That rosy muskiness. This one is hard to beat. This one is actually intended for women, but I'm going to find this one and I'm going to hunt it down and buy it for myself because it smells amazing on my skin, especially the dry down. I find myself more often spraying this before bedtime and letting that dry down kind of lull me into a peaceful serenity. Quite frankly, it's romantic and alluring regardless of the intended gender. Next up, we have Moschino Forever for men. This one is extremely fresh. It lists kumquat and anise as notes in the opening. This one sits a lot more closer to my skin, which again, is not very loud. It doesn't project crazily, but it smells amazing. And it smells great coming off my skin in close encounters. Quite simply put, it's a quiet, pleasant fragrance. It's really made for close encounters. Next up, Moschino's Cheap and Chic, I Love Love. I just noticed something on the bottom of this box. It has something about King features, an image of olive oil. I think I said that in one of my reviews that the bottle kind of reminds me of olive oil from Papa and all of that business. Something I hadn't noticed before. Another thing that I noticed on the box and on the fragrance itself, it doesn't say that it's intended for men or for women. It just says Eau de Toilette Natural Spray. I know this one is chiefly marketed toward women. I Love Love has made a few of my more recent top 10 lists. For I like the wide atomizer on this one too. Mm. This is beautiful for summer. Close Encounters too. A lot of folks complain about the longevity of this one. I don't really have those problems. Partially because I don't expect the freshies to do a whole lot. They smell great, and that's all I really need them to do. They don't need to be monster projectors. They don't need to last long. Just keep me smelling great for a little bit, and I'm happy. The citruses in this one indeed remind me of Dolce and Gabbana's like blue. They're a bit more apparent, and I love love. One of the most interesting notes in the fragrance is Bull Rush, a.k.a. Cattails. And I think that gives it a mossy or grounding effect that makes it smell a little bit earthier in the dry down. I love it though. I think it's perfect for close encounters. Have someone in your vicinity that has this on, you won't be upset at all. This smells amazing. It's for the ladies, but I feel like it has a vibe where the fellas could wear it as well, and I do, so take that how you want. Another one from the House of Moschino. Toy 2. Toy 2 is typically marketed or intended for women. I love the way this fragrance smells though. Great atomizer on it. I love this one. It smells fresh, fruity, and beautiful. Up close though, I ugh, this one right here, I know it's intended for women, but I wear this one. I wear this one for myself. I don't give a damn. It's a romantical type of fragrance though. It's fruity, it's fresh, it's damn near intoxicating. My eyes rolling in the back of my head smelling it. It smells so damn good to me. Kind of smells like Lifesavers gummy rings, if I had to put it in that. I cannot get enough of this one. 
If you can't tell, Moschino is quickly emerging to be one of my favorite fragrance houses. I seem to be collecting more of the product offerings at a rapid pace than any of my other fragrances in my Uncommon Sense collection. Next up, Narciso Rodriguez Blue Noir. And this is the Eau de Toilette. I feel like Blue Noir, for him, is a staple in any gentleman's collection. The fragrance is sensual and it sits closer to the skin. It is not a monster projector. Romantic elements can't be denied. Since I have experience with this fragrance sitting a little bit closer to the skin, I recall wearing this one on a date. We ended up going to a grown and sexy open mic. This one just sat within my general scent bubble and showed out the whole night. It was extremely alluring. I barely could get enough smelling myself. The musk in the mid and the vetiver in the base are the stars of this show. The perfect mix. The muskiness of it makes it lean more masculine. Blue Noir for him draws close comparison to Terre d'Air Mace. But to my nose, it smells extremely close to Givenchy's Blue Label. I also have a few fragrances that have some similar scent characteristics of this one. Oscar de la Renta Gentleman being one, but that one's just a bit more spicy. Up next, Black is Black Modern Oud by New Parfums. This one is intended for men, but I've had ladies reach out to me on YouTube to let me know they've bought this fragrance as well and it smells great on them. I can see that. This one has a powdery amber base, even though it's intended for men. I see that working well for the ladies. On my skin, it's a close encounter fragrance, but it does have a nice amount of projection where it's not one that you have to search after to sniff. You'll actually smell it when you wear it. It has good performance and decent projection to me. This one gets dubbed as a Dolce & Gabbana the One clone, but to my nose, I smell Tom Ford's Noir. And to be quite honest with you, I'd rather have this over those two, especially for the price. I think I paid 10 bucks for this one. It's a cheapie, but it doesn't smell cheap. This was one of my first fragrances that I reviewed, filmed, and posted. This one will probably always have a special place in my heart because this is actually what started all of this thing as me being Uncommon Sense. Next up, Sean Mendez Signature. This one is billed as unisex. I believe it leans just a little bit more feminine. It's sweet, sexy, fruity. It's billed as a gourmand. Let it dry down a little bit because it's very alcoholy <laughs> and it kind of smells like spritz. My mom is a cosmetologist, so <laughs> there's that. In addition, you know, having locks, you got to do something to this hair. This one kind of smells like pump it up spritz. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. It has a maple syrup accord. That's, <laughs> that's quite interesting. That's interesting for my collection because I, I don't believe I have any fragrances that have a maple syrup accord. But the sweeter fragrances tend to perform well on me. This was a cheapy pickup from Ross. I paid $14 for it. This is a fragrance that sits closer to my skin. That makes this perfect for a close encounter fragrance. It's, I definitely see the ladies getting more of a kick out of this one. Than one of the most unique notes or accords in this fragrance is the Duce de Leche. Again, it started to get into the edible gourmand type of vibe. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me while we get to our last fragrance. Thierry Mugale's Cryptoman. As his name implies, this one touts mint in the opening. And in the opening, the mint is very in your face and present. We have some cocoa and tonka, which kind of round this out and make it extremely sweet. This one is such a sexy, romantic fragrance. It's kind of like those combo ones. This one has made several lists, and I think it straddles the fence in terms of where it fits within the collection. Is it a sexy fragrance? Is it a romantic fragrance? I think it has one foot in each lane. On my skin, it's a gourmand that gets the romance started. Smelling all delicious. End up getting me snacked on, you know what I'm saying? I'll just leave that there. Come up with your own stories. Formulate your own opinions. You heard what I said. It starts off a bit strong, but the dry down and the longevity, it just smells so wonderful on my skin. Even though I'm sniffing the paper right now, this smells amazing on my skin. I didn't want to necessarily spray them all on skin because one, I have on long sleeves. It's kind of cool in Chicago today. And two, I would have came out smelling like 20 different fragrances. So didn't want that. Thanks again for making it to the end of my 20 most romantic fragrances. I want you guys to leave me a comment below. Let me know what are your thoughts about this list. 
What is your experience, of any, with the fragrances on this list? Let me know all that in the comments below. All right, fam, it's been real. I love you all with my whole heart. Until next time, I'm out.